G'day guys, in this episode I talk about what are the three mistakes people make when trying to raise money from investors and outline some of the key principles you need to adhere to in order to become investor ready to raise capital. I ride the wave swiftly, I fear no man, check my titles mate quickly. Came from the sky with the light of day in me, you grew my own while it came with me. <laughs> We've been busy, therefore we haven't been uh, filming as many episodes as we otherwise would have liked to. However, mm-hmm. here we are, we're back. I know. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. 187, Rosie, what's today's question? Okay, so today's question comes from Kevin Waller. What are the common mistakes entrepreneurs make when raising capital? And when should I actually start trying to? Hashtag Ask Jack D. Kevin, really good question. When should you start trying to? As late as possible, that's not going to impede or affect your growth, right? I think a lot of entrepreneurs, particularly early stage entrepreneurs, uh, view capital raising as a kind of, almost like a rite of passage that you should do early on, when often it's not necessary uh, or, or, or could be delayed to occur much later on. So, um, Let's talk about what entrepreneurs do wrong and within that I'll talk about some timing stuff. The first thing most entrepreneurs get wrong when trying to raise money from investors is they go in completely unprepared. What we need to realise and understand is that raising money from investors is a skill and it's a process and it's an exercise, no different to running a great marketing campaign or running a great video series or doing anything else in business. Raising money is no different. You need a period of about, it depends on the size of the business, right? But very early stage business, say maybe two months, three months max to become investor ready, right? Meaning you've got, uh, you've done all of the thinking, you've got all of the strategy, you've got all of the documentation, you can answer all of the questions, you're familiar with the risks inherent in the growth story, you understand what the exit options might be one day, um, and you've sort of, uh, you've done all the thing. you've done all the preparation, then you're ready to engage in a conversation with investors. The number one question I get, because prior to Entourage, I was obviously running uh, a company called MBE Education. We helped our clients raise hundreds of millions of dollars over a period of about four or five years. Um, the number one question I always get is, Jack, where can I find investors? And it's not the right question to be asking, because I can introduce you to 10 investors today. If you're not prepared, all you will do is burn those relationships. A better question is the, is the one that uh, this gentleman has asked, which is not where do I find investors, but what do I need to do to prepare? What are the mistakes people make? How do I get investor ready so that when I do have these conversations, what I'm presenting is attractive to investors? So, you know, I, I have a view and it's not a, uh, it's, it might sound like a bit of a woo-woo kind of a view, but my view is that when you are investor ready, the investors will be ready, meaning there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of investors around Australia actively looking for early stage deals on a daily basis. When you have a great deal, when you have a great business or a great business story that you're raising money into, often, and this is the truth, they will find you, right? Now that doesn't mean we don't go out and sort of uh, proactively uh, speak to investors and engage investors, but it does mean that some of the best deals I've ever done have been from investors that have found me because they've heard from a friend of a friend of a friend that Jack's doing something great, right? So that's the one thing, is unprepared. The second thing that most people get wrong is a too high valuation, right? Um, there, there is often a discrepancy between the valuation that the entrepreneur is arguing and the valuation that the investor thinks the business is valued at, right? And so... You want to be defending a high valuation, provided it's still fair and reasonable and representative of the true value of the company. Uh, However, you don't want to be arguing such a high valuation that it becomes unattractive as an investment opportunity, right? And so, and this kind of relates back to the first point in that as you become prepared, as you do all of the strategy, as you run all of the numbers, as you put together all of the documentation, part of that preparation period is engaging advisors. Right, speaking to people with being there, done that experience, and running your valuation methodology by them to get their input. Essentially, what you want to do, guys, is you know, the, due diligence. Right, due diligence is somebody running, you know, the fine tooth comb over your business, uncovering all the sort of rocks to see what's underneath them. Um, you want to do due diligence on yourself before the investor does. 
right? So you want to do all the strategy, all the preparation, all the documentation, and then run it by an advisor, run it by a mentor, run it by someone who's been there, done that experience in terms of all of the thinking, all of the modeling, all of the valuation methodology, so that they can tell you what's wrong before we run it live with investors, right? And so going through that process will often mean that your valuation is tapered accordingly to represent the true value of the business, which is a good thing. The number one thing that stops deals from going ahead, and this is research by a company called Wholesale Investor, number one thing that stops deals going ahead is investor going business wasn't ready. Number two thing is they say valuation was too high. The third thing, particularly early stage entrepreneurs get wrong when raising money, is viewing it almost as like, um, as like the milestone, right? Not, not as the finish line, because I doubt anyone would view it as the finish line but viewing it as like that's the end game is to raise money. That's not the end game, that's the start game. You raise a million dollars tomorrow, that's when the hard work starts. You've now got other people's money in your business. Uh, you, you've, you've, you've had investors come in according to a certain growth story. You, with every single thing you can muster, now need to deliver on that growth story or above. The number one rule of this game, guys, and trust me, I've raised personally tens of millions of dollars for my venture. I've bought businesses, uh, as I said before, I've helped clients raise hundreds of millions of dollars. The number one rule of this entire game, guys, and trust me on this, is you must make investors money. That is the fundamental principle to, and you know, I've raised tens of millions of dollars for my ventures, I've bought businesses using other people's capital, I've helped other people raise hundreds of millions of dollars through MBA education, and in doing all of that, the number one rule that I've always, always subscribed to is make your investors money. I have never lost an investor money, and I've always returned them far greater than what they were anticipating when they came into the deal. What that means is that when I go back to the table, firstly, it means that that rep reputation sort of spreads amongst investors. Secondly, when I go back to the table to that particular individual, they are very receptive to whatever I put on the table because I've delivered, I've executed, and therefore, I've made them a lot of money, and therefore, uh, it makes the conversation a lot easier. In this game, well, in life, in business, in particular, in investments, uh, your reputation is your number one asset. Raising the money is not a finish line. It is where the hard work begins. What was the guy's name who asked that question? Kevin. Kevin. It was a really, really good question. And Kevin, we have a capital raising workshop coming up. When is it, Rosie? No idea. <laughs> no. The dates will be somewhere around here. I wish we caught Rosie's face on camera just then. Guys, we have a capital raising workshop coming up. It's in May, I can yeah. tell you that much. It's the 26th and uh, 27th. 26th and 27th of May, we got there. Uh, and we have people coming. Uh, the, the speakers in this particular workshop have built companies w collectively worth over about $6 billion. We have Matt Rockman, the co-founder of Seek. Uh, which is obviously one of the largest sort of Australian startup success stories, obviously raised a lot of money, became public along the way. Uh, we have Peter Davison, the seed funder of PayPal, um, who came into the seed round of PayPal and ultimately exited to eBay for $1.5 billion. We have Megan Quinn, the co-founder of Net-A-Porter. Uh, we've got Ruben Buchanan, who was my business partner at MBE Education. Ruben just lists businesses, like raises money and lists businesses today, uh, and myself. So. Guys, over these two days, it's gonna be an intensive workshop where if you wanna become investor ready, you wanna uh, build a great valuation, you wanna do all of these uh, things to ultimately raise capital and more importantly, build an incredibly valuable business. Can we put the link around this video somewhere mm -hmm. so that they can see it? Make sure you are there. Episode 187, Kevin, thank you very much for that question. Guys, click on the link below. I look forward to seeing you at the Capital Raising Workshop. Speak to you in the next episode.